Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Sunday worship service today in Jesus' name. And I pray the service will be of tremendous benefit to everyone. That has who came, you will not go back that same way. New strength. A new beginning. With a new power. A new commitment to the Lord in Jesus' name. That whatever is happening around you, whatever is happening before you, behind you, you will walk higher, taller, greater in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. What a joy it is to be in your presence. And we know that as we get deeper into your word, our joy in the Lord will increase in Jesus' name. You take every life, everyone, every family, and the whole church, and you take us higher in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. Show us greater things, deeper truth, and greater blessing in your word, even today in Jesus' name. Make us not only hearers of the word only, but possessors of the blessings of God in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A good final amen. We're coming to Second John, having only one chapter. I'm highlighting verse 4. We're looking at the whole chapter, but we're highlighting verse 4. I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in the truth, walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. Think about yourself as a father, as a mother, as a parent. And the apostle has heard about your children, your biological children. Can you say, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in the truth, saved by the truth sanctified by the truth, empowered by, by, by the truth, emboldened by the truth, courageous by the truth, having conviction on the truth. And the apostle, because of you, because of your family, he says, I rejoiced, not only moderately, I rejoiced greatly that I found of thy children walking in the truth, the truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. He looks at your life and he looks at you as a child of God, as a convert, as a believer. And he looks at the work of your spiritual parents who brought you into the Lord and brought you up in the Lord. Can he say, to your pastor, to your spiritual parent, to your father in the Lord, to your mother in the Lord, I rejoice greatly that I found of your converts, of your children, spiritual children, I found them walking in the truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. He's looking at a church planter, at an evangelist who has gone here and there and there. And he plants a church here, plants another church here, and the apostle goes around and he supervises. And he watches the lives of those converts and of those new churches, of the churches that are planted. And now he's writing to the church planter. 
is writing to the believer, the worker, and the leader, the preacher. And he says, I rejoice. Not just moderately, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children, those churches who planted and those churches that were shepherd, walking in the truth. And they're walking not in a selected truth. The people that select the truth, they're going to walk in. They say, I accept this, I reject that. I believe this, I doubt that. I embrace this, I jettison that other thing. But now the apostle says, as I look at your children, as I look at your converts, as I look at the churches that have your name as the planter, I rejoice greatly that I found all those children, all those converts, loving the truth, accepting the truth, believing the truth, engaging the truth, making their light to align with the truth, and believing not just part of the truth, but they believe the totality of the truth that has been revealed unto them. As we have received a commandment from the Father, the Lord is looking at you as one of those children, as one of those converts, as one of those members of this church. Can those who watch your life, can those who see your behavior, can those who see the pattern of your conduct, can they say, after everything is said and done, we're not members of that church, but we have interacted with their members. And there is anything we can say about the children, their boys and girls, if there's anything we can say about their converts, those who agree with that church, and those who are members of that church, and those who are committed worshippers of that church, can those people say, we well, rejoice greatly that we have found of their converts, of their children, of their leaders, of the people who associate with them walking in the whole truth. The truth of scripture, the totality, the entirety, the completeness, the one that transforms life, the truth that gets into you, and the truth that changes and totally purifies the inner man. I found them walking in the truth, exactly as we have received commandments from the Father. They don't modify, they don't misinterpret, they don't misconstrue, and they don't change, they don't do anything with the truth except to receive that truth as it was given to them as we have received commandment from the Father. John, the beloved, the youngest of the apostles, the twelve apostles, and the oldest, and that he is the last one to die, while all the others died by being killed. He died later in natural death. And now the apostle John is about 90 years of age. And he's seen the beginning of Christianity. He's seen the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came and gave the ministry, the Christianity, and the redemptive life unto the people. He's seen Jesus die. He's seen Jesus buried. He has seen Jesus risen from the dead. He has seen Jesus interacting with them in those 40 days. He has seen Jesus ascending to heaven. Now, at the age of 90, old man, looking at what the Lord has given to us, looking at the whole truth, the sanctified truth, 
the saving truth, the empowering truth, and the truth that takes us from earth to heaven. And he looked at the children and the converts of this lady that she wrote to. And he said, I have just one joy. I look at your own life, and I look at the lives of those, your children, and I compare your life, I compare your character, I compare your conduct, I compare your consecration with what we received from the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. There's one comment I have. I rejoice greatly that I found that my children, they're walking consistently, they're walking constantly, they're walking step after step, they're walking courageously, they're walking uncompromisingly in the truth, exactly as we received commandment from the Father. I want to talk to you today on walking in the whole truth till the end. Walking in the whole truth until the end. Walking in the whole truth. Not partial truth, not a truth we seek and choose the entire truth, the whole truth until the very end. I'm looking at Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth and sell it not. There are times in people's lives, either the old debts, or they're not able to maintain their family, that all the things they had in the house, they begin to look at them one by one. Which one can we dispose of so that we can keep body and soul together? So we can pay all that we need to pay and they sell this and they sell that and they sell that other thing the Lord is saying whatever comes whatever goes whatever happens whatever does not happen whatever the economy says whatever the situation may be around you there is one commodity you will never sell. Although you might sell material things, but there is this truth, saving truth, sanctifying truth, empowering truth, the truth that takes us from earth to heaven. This truth, you might sell any other thing in the home, any other thing as property, any other thing in your own community buy the truth and sell it not also wisdom and instruction and understanding this is the truth where to live by and this is the truth where to pass on to our children that when you buy the truth and you live in the truth and you walk in the truth and your children are growing up from infancy to childhood and to their teenage years and to their adult life, they can testify about daddy and mommy. Mommy got saved. Mommy got sanctified. Daddy got saved. Daddy got sanctified. And daddy, mommy held on to the truth. They bought the truth. They passed the truth to us and they sold that truth not. And if you happen to be passing on, your children can say, there is one thing about daddy and mommy. There is one thing about our parents until their last breath. They walked in the truth. They talked the truth. They taught us the truth. They lived by the truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Walking in the whole truth till the end. Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, 
We're reading from verse 25. But that which ye have already, what do we have? As you have come to worship with us in this church, you got saved, you got sanctified, you got married, you're not having children, and you've got a job, you've got a profession. You, are, you came when you were much younger, and now you are here. The Lord is saying, you have something already. If there's anything you have since you came, it is the truth of Scripture. We have not hidden anything from anyone. You have that truth, you possess that truth, you are walking in that truth. And the Lord is saying that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Unto the end. There's no point just walking in the light a few days and then you go back to darkness. There's no point walking the truth a few years and then you go back into falsehood. There is no point walking in the love of God and then a few years after you go back to hatred and bitterness and it says, He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a porter shall they be broken in shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. I pray you'll be a partaker. I pray you'll be a possessor, that he will reward you on the final day, if you continue in the truth until the end, if you embrace the truth until the end, if you appreciate the truth until the end, if you walk in the truth until the end, and I will give him the morning star, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I have ears to hear. I said, I have ears to hear. I will hear the truth revealed by the Spirit in Jesus' name. And let the whole church say, Walk in in the whole truth till the end. We're looking at three subtitles in the message. Number one, raising up godly children walking in the truth. Raising up godly children walking in the truth. You've got a family. You've got children. You know what the Lord wants you to do? You may not have money to send them here and there. You may not have everything they might say parents should give to them. There is one thing you must not miss out. Give it to your children, your biological children. They are toddlers. They are real children. They are becoming teenagers. They are youths. They even go to university. Or they go overseas. And then they come back. Your children are your children. They are not working. They have done their youth service. Your children are your children. There is no time. You will close your eyes to your children that they become so old and they become so disobedient that you cannot talk to your children. It is your responsibility that you will raise up godly children who are walking in the truth. Number two, retaining our gracious conviction for the word of truth. While we ourselves adult believers, while we ourselves parents, fathers and mothers are walking in and living, we have our challenges, we have our persecutions, we have the suffering, we have whatever in the midst of our life, whatever may be happening, 
whatever we lose of material things in the world, there is one thing we never give up on, the conviction we have, the gracious conviction in the word of truth, retaining it, maintaining it, standing by it, never allowing whatever persecution or suffering to take the conviction in the word of truth away from us point number two retaining our gracious conviction for the word of truth point number three recovering guilty compromises recovering bringing back running after them and retrieving them, pulling them away from the corruption defilement they have gone into, recovering guilty compromises, wandering away from the truth. There are those who have been with us before, maybe they're still there physically, but as they pursue the things of life, as they pursue money in the world, as they pursue material, tangible things in the world, they have strayed away from the truth. We need to recover them. The guilty compromisers, they have wandered away from the truth. Point number three, recovering guilty compromisers, wandering away from the truth. Point number one. Tell me point number one about their brother, sister. Raising up godly children walking in the truth. Look at first John again, second John chapter four, and I'm reading from verse four. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children, of thy children walking in the truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. You know uh, that John, the beloved, was writing to a lady, to a mother. And he didn't mention the father at all, which makes uh, many commentators to say that the woman might have been a widow. But then, single mother, a widow, she kept on raising up those children without any support of her husband, and yet she made sure that the children remained in the truth. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to train our children. He doesn't want us to abandon our children to the schools. The schools may teach academic knowledge. They cannot teach spiritual knowledge. That the schools may be able to give a certificate to our children, but they cannot give conversion and conviction to our children. The schools may prepare them for the things on earth, for a work on earth, for a profession on earth, so that they can do, get a work and then put food in their mouth. But they cannot give them the grace that leads them to heaven. That's why the Lord makes sure that it is your responsibility that you will raise up your own child to get salvation. If other people are helping you like our workers in the youth section, they're just helping you. The responsibility is yours that you will bring up your own children, train up your own children, bring them into the knowledge of the truth that brings them to salvation. Uh, Proverbs chapter 22, I'm reading verse 6. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. How do you do that? You read the Bible with them. You demonstrate the Bible before them. You correct them whenever they're going astray. And you are loving to them. And you are conversant with them. And you associate with them. And you take interest in everything they do. And you make sure that whatever they get, whatever knowledge they have, the number one experience they ought to have, they ought to have salvation. 
being born again, receiving Jesus Christ as their personal Savior after they have turned away from their sin. And then you are now teaching them and discipling them and you are bringing them up and you are training them in the way they should go. They need to know the way to go, how to live their lives, how to comport themselves, how to pray, how to learn from the Bible, and how to live an upright life when you are not there and when you are there. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Many people have said, many parents have said, our children, when they were growing up, we brought them up in the Lord and we taught them in the way of the Lord, now they have gone to school, now they have gone to university, now they have gone overseas, and they have become another person. It's not my child that I used to know. You didn't train them, you didn't teach them. The people in the world train them to go in the way of the world more than you train them. And those children, they found those worldly people. They found them more convincing than you have been. You didn't train them like the world trained them. Now you've lost them into the world. I pray they will come back to the Lord in Jesus' name. Train up a child in the way he should go. Make it your full-time job. Make it a job, a work more important than your secular work. Make it more important than any other thing you are pursuing. When your child is sick, very sick, how do you care for that child? And a child needs all your money, even more than you have, to take care of that child and to treat that child. You make every effort to make sure that that child is in health. Salvation is greater than physical health. Conversion is greater than all those other things. If you spend your time, you spend your money, you spend your effort, you sweat, and you spend day and night praying, agonizing that the child will be in health, you should do more for their salvation. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, the sin has mixed with the heart and with the mind and with the blood and with the brain. Look at people in the other religion. Look at how they train their children. Look at people, even in so-called Christianity, like for example the Catholic Church. Look at how they train their children that when they get older, what their parents have taught them, even though it was not the complete truth, they hold on to that thing tenaciously. I see it, you say you believe the gospel, you accept the gospel, and you cannot even face your children. The children have become so difficult, and they become, a, you know, higher than you are, and they resist you, and you cannot tell them, my child, I'm responsible for bringing you into this world. Without me, you will not be here. Sit down and listen to me. And with prayer, and with love, and with commitment, and with consistency, and with courage, and with conviction, you bring those children into the teaching of the Word of God. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, they will not depart from it. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Psalm 144. Psalm 144. I'm reading from verse 11. Read me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. If you look at the beginning of the psalm, it's the psalm of David. As you look at David's family, a king, the psalmist of Israel, and the one that spoke much about God, and the one that had confidence in God, it is covered. Strange things came among children in his own family. You know the story. There's an Amnon, there is an Absalom, and a one that is called Adonijah, you, you think about all those children 
and, and David had to pray, Lord, read me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood, that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. When your children grow up from children and now they're youths, and they begin to manifest some traits, you don't become afraid. You're not pushed away by their actions. You know, they're teenagers now. And look at how they do. You're still the father. You're still the mother. They're still your children. And it says, by prayer and by teaching, by good example, you will make sure that you want your children to be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. Look at David himself. He was such a man that he had been brought up by the Lord through the parents, some 71. In Psalm 71, I'm reading from verse 5, Psalm 71, verse 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. When he was born, he said, Did my mother conceive me? He didn't know anything about God. It's the parents that led him to God, to understand who God is and what God can do and the power and the privilege of conversion or salvation. Thou art my trust from my youth. Somebody brought him to trust in the Lord from his youth. The parents, trust the Lord. Believe the Lord. Hold on to the Lord. You cannot save yourself. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Education is good for bread and butter. Education is not good enough for heaven. And what will take you to heaven is their salvation. Somebody taught, taught him and he said, I trusted in the Lord from my youth. Look at verse 17. O God, that was taught me from my youth. My parents started it. Daddy, mommy started it. And then I could hear your voice and I could hear your teaching and training. Lord God, that was taught me from my youth. He that to have I declared thy wondrous works. What's the testimony of God concerning Abraham? What's the joy of the Lord concerning Abraham? And what is the basis of the fulfillment of the promise of God for Abraham? Genesis chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 17. Genesis chapter 18, verse 17. Can the Lord bear witness of you as a father? As a mother, like a witness about Abraham, and the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know him. For I know him. Can he say that about you? I know him. He will not rush out of the house while the children are still sleeping. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. He will not stay late in the place of work while the children have gone to sleep. And the children know nothing about this Christian man. And when they are coming to church, I'm a worker, I'm a pastor, I'm a leader. He leaves the house and he goes to the church. The mother and the children are still behind. If they come, okay. If they don't come, they know the church. And then after the church service, is sitting down there counseling, counseling, counseling. The children have gone back. And whether the children follow on or not, he doesn't know. Can the Lord testify about you? Like he said about Abraham in verse 19. For I know him that he will command his children. It's not going to suggest to his children. He's going to command his children. His life is a commanding life. 
is conviction. It's a, it's a commanding conviction. And his behavior is a convicting, commanding behavior. His sacrifice, his yieldedness to God is a, command, is a commanding yieldedness. It's not, you know, an indulgent father. It's not a lukewarm father. It's not a permissive father. Okay, children, you know the church I go, and that's my conviction. And I'm telling you, children, that in my church, they preach the totality of the Word of God. If I'm not sure about any other thing, I know that church, as I listen to everything that is not there, said there, I know it will take me to heaven. Which church do you want to be going at? Why are you doing like this, children? Okay, okay, it's your choice. If you want to follow me, I'll be happy. But if you say it's another place you want to go, you're still my children. I'll still educate you. I'll still buy everything for you. And if you say you don't want my God, my salvation, my heaven, you want to go to the other side, I will not see you for the other side, not Abraham. Abraham had a commitment to God. And God said, I know him. I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord. They, the children, shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. You know, there are times when your commitment in the congregation, your commitment in the church may hinder the greatest work you have, the raising up of godly children. Because you are committed to church service. You are committed to go here and go there. And you are committed to activity. I must be there. If I'm not there, everything will collapse. If I'm not there, everything will crumble. And your children, you are not there for them. Your daughters and your sons, you are not there for them. But you are there for the congregation. Abraham was not like that. All that Abraham had to do, he committed himself and he was going to lead their children, his children, in the way of the Lord. And God commended him for that. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. I'm starting with verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 2. It tells us in verse 2. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. You will not bring in strange doctrine, adding something erroneous to the word of God. You will not take away strange, strange doctrine that tells you to deny yourself. I don't like that one. I don't accept that one. That one is difficult. That one is not my stuff. Don't take anything away and don't add anything to the word of God. Now look at verse 9. In verse 9, only take it to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest be depart from thine heart all the days of your life but teach them don't let the world teach your children teach them don't let prophets false prophets teach your children teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in hurry, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the 
days that they live upon the earth, and they may teach their children, that they may teach their children, that they may teach their children, and the children are growing up, you teach them the word, you, you fill them with the word, you make the word dwell in them. We're looking at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. We're reading from verse 9. Where were thou shall a young man cleanse his way? Your children are not growing up. Our children are not growing up. How do they cleanse their ways? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. They have heard the word that's going to prepare them for heaven and they know that if they backslide, Christ can come at any time. They are conscious of the coming of the Lord anywhere they are. They are at school, they are at the university, they are in college, anywhere they are. They are playing with their friends, anywhere they are. All the same, they are conscious of the very fact that there is an all-seeing eye of God watching them. He listens to every conversation. He watches every action. They know that from the teaching you have given them. Where well, with that shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Look at verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. It, what, what you do is what your children will do to you. You're teaching them, and they know that you are not just saying, do as, I, do as I say and not as I do. With your whole heart, you're serving the Lord. With your whole mind, you're serving the Lord. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. Father, mother, children, thy word have I hid in my heart. Pastor, preacher, members of the church, thy word have I hid in my heart, old and young, thy word have I hid in my heart, school leaver, and those who are still students, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. And when you train your children properly, they know they are conscious of the presence of God every time. And like Joseph, in the house of Potiphar, the father was not there. The mother was not there. And when he was invited to sin, he said, how can I do that? And sin against my God. The parents had taught him that sinning against God brings judgment. He said, I can't do that. I can't go that way. I can't be part of that kind of gang. And I can't join that. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You will not sin. Your child, your children will not go back to sin. The faith in you will abide in them in Jesus' name. And let's come to Second Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, unhypocritical faith, unpretending faith, a sincere faith, a deep faith, a real faith, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, Timothy, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee is in thee also. The grandmother had that faith, saving faith. She passed on to her own daughter, the mother of Timothy. Saving faith, abiding faith, sustaining faith. And the mother passed that on to Timothy. And Paul the Apostle said, you were converted before I knew you. And before you joined my team, you already got salvation through your mother and your grandmother. And I can testify that faith 
saving faith, sanctifying faith, sustaining faith abides in you three from generation to generation to another generation. Chapter 3, 2 Timothy, chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. How do we train our children? Not with local proverbs, not with traditional tribal principles. How do we train our children? Not with the downloads you have from all these, uh, what they call heroes and stars. You bring them up in the way, in the word of the Lord. And that from a child, thou hast thou was known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Wise unto salvation. There are children of church members and children of church preachers and children of overseers and leaders who are wise unto crime. They are wise unto ICT. They are wise unto doing this. and They are wise unto doing evil. But in the case of Timothy, the mother, the mother did not say, the father is not helping me. You are just looking at me to bring up. You know, there's a boy. What can I do with a boy? And the boy is becoming a teenager. What can I do with the boy now? And uh, my husband, you're just leaving me to this. No, the father was a Greek. The father was a Gentile. But the mother was a Jewess. And she brought that boy up in the way of the Lord. Not waiting for another one. There are people who are complaining. What are they doing in the children's church? What are they doing in the youth church? How is my boy like this? It's your responsibility. It's you that should bring up your child. And whatever your child becomes, the Lord is going to ask you, What have you done with that child? The, in the case of Timothy, it said, From a child that was known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So the mother was not just teaching religion, she was teaching that child the way of the Lord that brought him to salvation. I pray to be so in every one of our families in Jesus name and our children will listen to us I said our children will listen to us when we bring up our children in the way they should go and we make them to understand that this Bible is higher is greater is of more authority than any textbook of any subject they can have and when we make them to understand, look, the people in the other religion, they bring their children to almost idolize their own holy book. They will not put that book on the bare ground. And if anybody does anything unseemly with that, their own regarded holy book, they're willing to lose their lives and they will say anything and do anything to anyone that will defile their own holy book. And when they go to their places of worship, their parents have so taught them that they regard the God they believe in. And you see them well comported. How you see that is in the Christian church. Where this is the word that leads us to heaven, that the children will not regard the Bible, that the children will come to the house of God, and they don't want to even want to hear. When the word of God comes to them directly, it's like, preacher, what came on you today? You're not supposed to talk to us children. You're not supposed to talk to us youth. You're not supposed to talk to us students. You can talk to our parents. That's okay. You're adult. They are adult. But for us, leave us alone. Why did you come to church? You came to church so that all that your parents are teaching you at home will top up everything. You'll be a godly child in Jesus' name. 
Save child in Jesus name Sanctify child in Jesus name And you will take the light of the world The light of the gospel And go and shine that light Anywhere, everywhere you go In Jesus name And the children said Amen And the youth said Amen Amen in your life I said amen in your life And everything you do As you hear the word of God God will accompany you And go with you everywhere you go You'll be a godly child You'll be a growing child You'll be a glorious child And the promises of God will be yes and amen In every one of our children In Jesus name Point number two now Retaining our gracious conviction Retaining I want to ask you, whoever you are, old or young, what was your conviction some years ago? You can ask me, what was my conviction some years ago? The same conviction I've ever had since I became saved in 1964, that same conviction I hold today. There is nothing that I believed at that time on salvation, on sanctification, on commitment, on consecration, on self-denial, on the power of the Holy Ghost. There is nothing from cover to cover in the Bible that I believed at that time, that I don't believe now. Many much water has gone under the bridge. My conviction is there. And there have been persecution and suffering my conviction is there that mean opposition and contradiction my conviction is there that been those who supported and now they have gone their own way my conviction is there what the lord is wanting you to do as a child of god is that you retain your gracious conviction of the word of truth we're coming back to second john chapter one second john chapter one i'm reading from verse four second john chapter one verse four i rejoice greatly that i found of thy children walking in the truth as we have received a commandment from the father and now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. He said, lady, sister, he said, brother, he said, adult, he said, everyone, that the conviction we had from the beginning must abide and must remain. This is law that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, don't change, as we have heard from the beginning, don't, 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 don't uh, kind of tailor that word or, or trim that word, as we have heard from the beginning, we shall walk in it you might travel overseas take the word with you you might get a new job take the word with you you might walk in a sensitive place take the watch with you you might travel to the village take the word with you you might be among your relatives your relations take the word with you as you have heard from the beginning you should walk in it it might be wedding time stay with the word it might be funeral time stay with the word it might be reception time after the wedding of your son your daughter abide in the word it might be a joyful time something new has happened and you're happy and excited abide in the word it might be time of sorrow it may be time of suffering, may be time of sickness, may be time when people are saying, are you still going to abide like that and remain like that? And uh, you know, other people, they've had this problem, and when they try this and try that, then the change came, abide in the world. As you have heard from the beginning, you shall walk in it. For many deceivers are entered, into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and antichrist. There are many people that will propound theories about Christ. 
about his birth about whether jesus is christ was christ in jesus about which is the one that died on the cross is it jesus or christ and which is the one that rose again is it jesus or christ don't let there be any confusion jesus christ came in the flesh and he lived a perfect life and he died for our sins and he rose again the third day the deceivers and the antichrist will say something different abide by the word you heard from the beginning look to yourselves that we lose not the things what we have brought look to yourselves that we don't preach in vain look to yourself that we don't labor in vain look to yourself that you don't come to service in vain look to yourself that all these contributions you are making and all the sacrifices you are making will not be in vain look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward your reward will be full as we abide in the truth, in the word of God, and what we have always believed, the totality of the word of God, as we abide, the Lord will keep your reward for you in full. Whosoever, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, as not God, if you're going to keep your conviction, you must exalt the word of God above every man above every woman i hope your husband is going to abide in the truth but should it so happen that your husband says i've got another gospel i've seen another way apart from the narrow way that leads to heaven and he says i'm going to establish this now and you are my wife and we're together we're together in the truth we're together if you abide in salvation. We're together if you abide in the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If you stray away and you become a deceiver and you become an antichrist, we're no more together. I said we're no more together. I didn't hear the church. You see, there are people that think that marriage the whole thing in their lives they exalt marriage above their salvation they exalt marriage above their holiness they, they exalt marriage above getting to heaven and they say marriage so delicate marriage i must keep marriage i must watch over my family my wife my husband and the wife decides she doesn't want to abide in the truth anymore. My wife, my wife, don't do this. Uh -uh, that's my choice. If you want to remain there, sanctification, holiness, that's your choice. I'm going my way of liberty. And then the husband will say, well, I cannot leave you alone till death do us part. And so we're together, together in hell, together in hell, together in false doctrine, together in rebellion against the word of God. God forbid. I said, God forbid. You know, I was so lucky and fortunate that I became a believer before I went to college, university. Before I became a graduate, before I got married, before I had anything. And so that thing I got, before all those other things, all those other things that came later, they will not take salvation away from my hand. How about you? I said, how about you? Some people make their wives their God. They make their husband their God. And the wives agree with that. Good husband, you make me your God. And you put me number one. And you put God number two. Shame on such a woman. You wouldn't want your husband to make you a God. You wouldn't want your wife to make you a God. 
if your wife really loves you, God will be number one in your life. Am I talking to somebody there? That's how you keep your conviction. That certificate will not get your conviction out of your hand. Marriage will not take your conviction out of your hand. A friend, did I have any friends? I was glued and married to mathematics before I became born again. And to just studying and studying and studying. Do you have any friends? The only friend I had or went to, you know, white garment church together. And when I got the truth, and I came to the truth, if I greeted my friend, good morning, he will not answer. Good readers. Who wants a person that doesn't believe in the word of God? Friends will not take the word of God away from you. That's why it says, whosoever, whoever they are, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, has not God. You want to be friends with someone who does not have God? He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, the totality of Christ, from our redemption to our glorification, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speech is partaker of his evil deeds. Do you not be a partaker of evil deeds in Jesus' name. Well, abide in the truth. You retain the truth. You will stand in the truth. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, we're reading from Bastachi. Psalm 119, Bastachi, I have chosen the way of truth. It's a choice. It's a choice. You make up your mind. You know that this is what will take you to heaven. And heaven is for the individual. It's not a corporate thing. All of us will make covenant together that we will get to heaven. No, it doesn't happen like that. You are born into this world all alone by yourself. You were born into the kingdom of God all alone by yourself. You will enter into the kingdom of God all alone by yourself. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments are violated before me. You stand by the truth. You will abide in the truth. And nothing will take this truth away from you in Jesus' name. Your friend will not take the truth away from you. Your companion will not take the truth away from you. Your spouse will not take the truth away from you. A Christian worker will not take the truth away from you. There are some people they don't know that apostles backslide. Judas Iscariot backslid. There are some people, they don't know that walkers backslide, demons backslid. And so, if an apostle tells them something, and they say it's contrary to the word of God, they say it's an apostle, and so they follow. If a walker, demons, tells them something contrary to the word of God, they say, well, it's a walker, and they follow. You will not follow an apostate. You will not follow a backsliding worker. You will not follow a backsliding apostle. You will stand by the word of God all through your life in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye, have, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men. Ye received it not as the word of men. The word of salvation, that's not the word of men. The word of sanctification, holiness, without which no man shall save the Lord, that's not the word of men. 
and the word of the power of God to heal, to deliver. That's not the word of men. Ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth. As it is in truth, as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually walketh also in you that believe. As long as you are believing the word of God, that word of God will be walking in your life. It will energize you to walk in the truth, empower you to walk in the truth. It will embolden you to walk in the truth. And your conviction will remain and abide in Jesus' name. Many years ago, quite many now, a journalist came from the UK. He wanted to write a book on deeper life. And he interacted with us here at the headquarters. And then he went to the states. He went to states in the north and states in the south. And as he worshipped with them, they didn't know he was, you know, a journalist going to write something. And he was, uh, you know, jotting down things. He came back. And when he came back, he said, every church he went to in the stage, every church he went to, even in some rural areas, they were keeping to the word of God. And those people had conviction. You will have conviction. If it's happening to the people far away, even people outside Nigeria, they receive the word of God wholeheartedly. And after the, after the message, I'm told they pray and pray and pray in the message. If it is happening to them out there, more will happen to us in here in Jesus' name. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Reading from that verse 13 again, for this cause, thank we God without ceasing, because when ye receive the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Do you believe? I said, do you believe the word will walk in you? Point number three now, recovering guilty compromises, wandering away from the truth. There are people that wander away from the truth. And when they wander away like that, what happens to them spiritually? Look at Proverbs chapter 21. Verse 16, Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The one who wanders away from the truth and he goes into error. The one who wanders away from the word of salvation and he wanders into sinfulness. And now he says, I don't believe anybody can be free from sin. I have tried, I have tried, and I couldn't be free. And as I want to come out of the immorality, I get into it again. Nobody can be free. He's wandered away into the wilderness of sin. He dwells now in the congregation of the dead. I pray it will not happen to you. If it has happened, you will come back. Come back into the truth and come back into the way of righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 14, reading from verse 10. Jeremiah chapter 14. From verse 10, thus says the Lord unto these people, they have loved to wonder. It has become something they enjoy, something they embrace. They have loved to wonder. They hear the truth, but they have itching ears. They have loved to wonder. They're near salvation, and before they get that salvation, they wander into a place of deception. 
they were seeking after holiness because they believed without holiness no man shall see the Lord. And then after some time they say holiness, holiness. I prayed, I prayed last week, I prayed the other time, and look at me now this week and see what I got myself into. They wander away into deception and don't believe they are loved to wonder they have not refrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord does not accept them. Those wanderers, the Lord does not accept them the way they are. And it says, well, now, will you remember their iniquity and visage their sins? I pray that that spirit of wandering, the Lord will take away from you in Jesus' name. Amos is in the Old Testament. Amos, I'm reading chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 11. Amos chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. A famine of hearing the words of the Lord. Those people had a chance, a privilege before to hear the words of the Lord, but eventually they despised the word. And so a famine came upon them. Think about some denominations, the one that John Wesley established, and the word was copious there. The word was flowing there. Look at that church today. Sanctification. Missing now in the doctrine, in the emphasis, in the teaching of such a church. Think about the Salvation Army. Established by somebody who had the fire of God in his soul. And they believed the word of salvation. And they went after lost sinners. And the, the passion for sinners drove them. William Booth, the founder, said he would have loved to, that every minister and every member of the Salvation Army will go to hell for five minutes and see what they suffer and come back and then evangelism will occupy their lives every moment of the day. Look at what Salvation Army has now become distribute this, do good, and all that. And the emphasis of that salvation is now, look at the Pentecostal churches that believed in being born again and being sanctified and being filled with the Holy Ghost. And they believed in living out the word of God. Look at many of those Pentecostal charismatic churches today in our land and outside our land, outside our country, they've gone over to another thing, only dancing and drumming and, you know, all the other things of money matters. The word of God is no more there. And the Lord said there will be a famine, a famine of hearing the word in verse 12. And they shall wander, and they shall wander, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. I shall not find it. That's what happens to wanderers. You will not be a wanderer. You will not be a wanderer from the truth in Jesus' name. A wanderer from the word of God in Jesus' name. Will abide in the word. I will abide in the word. Not only in the head, in the heart. And the word, your work will be the work of righteousness. And the work of holiness. And the work in the truth in Jesus' name. James chapter 5, James chapter 5, verse 19. James chapter 5, verse 19, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, wander away from the truth, no more zealously holding on the truth, if any of you wander away from the truth, he was in the truth of salvation, he's wandered away. He was in the truth of self-denial 
and self-discipline is wandered away. He was in the truth of sanctification is wandered away. He was in the truth of one man, one wife until death do us part. He has wandered away. He was in the truth of no divorce and even no separation. He has wandered away. They say I read a particular book. And that book tells me that if I'm not happy with my husband and there are some problems at home we cannot resolve, they say God has given us the liberty, dump that man, jettison that man, throw away that man and marry anybody you want that you are still for heaven. They wander away from the truth of the world. I pray God will preserve you in the truth in Jesus' name. If any of you do hear from the truth and want converting, bring them back, back to the truth. Bring them back, back to salvation. Bring them back, back to sanctification. Bring them back, back to total submission and surrender to the word of God. And one of you convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner, the sage will convert the sinner. Give me a good amen. The sinner will not convert the saint. I said the sinner will not convert the saint. Anybody wanting to be my friend, having a goal, having a purpose, the man is too strict. The man is totally for the Bible. The Bible has eaten up his brain. The Bible has occupied his heart. I want to change this man. I'm going to get near him. I'll be his friend. I will so love him. I'll be nice to him. And my friendship with him will convert him from truth to error. I'll make him water down the word of God. Church, what do you say? God forbid. God forbid. Any friend any man, any woman that will come into my life at this late hour after I've held on to the truth for all these many decades anyone that will come and say will water it down for him. The word of God in his mouth will water it down. The Lord will send fire from heaven. Send them far away from me in Jesus' name. You have held the word of truth all this your life since you came to this deeper life Bible church. Any sinner in your office? Any sinner in your family? Any sinner in your community that will say, I will get near him. I'll get near her and wash away everything he got in that place God forbid in your life yeah. whatever they want to give you whatever they want to offer you may God separate them far away from you in Jesus name yeah. they will not convert you yeah. your conversion is good enough Converted to Christ, converted to God, converted for heaven, converted for the truth, that conversion is good enough. No other conversion back to darkness in Jesus' name. But now you will be a tool of the conversion of sinners. A tool and instrument in converting backsliders in Jesus' name. Brethren, if any of you do hear from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save his soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. The Lord is going to use you. The word in your mouth will convert and restore backsliders. 
the word in your mouth will bring fervency and zeal in the lives of those who are lukewarm in Jesus' name. The Lord has raised you up. You will not fall down. And all those who are falling down, the Lord will give you the fire, the zeal, the power, the courage, the backbone to stoop down and lift them up in Jesus' name. You will get to heaven. Holding on to the truth, you'll get to heaven. Our children will get to heaven. Our youths will get to heaven. Our college students will get to heaven. Daddy and mommy will get to heaven. Our pastors will get to heaven. Where are you? I'm talking to somebody there. I say, where are you? You will get to heaven. Heaven, 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 heaven. Heaven is your goal. You will get there in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, you are not firewood for hell. And you are not a candidate for hell. And you are not a, you are not a stranger that will stray into hell. You are going to heaven. Keep your eyes on the goal. You are going to heaven. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You are going to heaven. Keep your eyes on the Bible. You are going to heaven. Keep your eyes on the truth. Hold on to the truth. Believe the truth. Young people, children, you, students, and adults, fathers, mothers, preachers, and members, hold on to the truth until we get to heaven. Nothing will take you away from the path that leads to heaven in Jesus' name.